Namaste Hong Kong. I'm grateful to all the organizers, the team, every member and all the people who have assembled here for this fantastic occasion. Um, I hope I do justice to the opportunity that's been given to me to share my limited views and whatever little I know with this fantastic audience which has managed to come here braving the weather. Um, you know, I was just wondering, and even on the way to the venue, I was asking Ami, what exactly should I, exactly should I speak on? Because uh, I frankly don't have a script in mind. Usually, I don't have a script in mind. Most of my engagements are extempore in nature. So I was thinking of something very uh, momentous, which is which is perhaps the subject of discussion for over a week in Bharat and outside of Bharat, but about Bharat, which is the transition from India to Bharat. So exactly a century ago, we were under His Royal Highness Emperor George V in 1923. We were part of his empire. We were part of the British Empire. 2023, from India that is Bharat, we are perhaps looking at a transition from India to Bharat. Allow me to read a few things or a few extracts from my first book. This is not to sell the book any further, it has already sold itself well. The idea is to perhaps give people some kind of material, some kind of a context or some kind of a sandarbha so that you have uh, an idea as to what is this entire debate that's going on in Bharat about. I think I've said this in several public uh, engagements uh, as part of the book term, the first book, as to why I choose this title, India that is Bharat. So while 2014, according to me, marks a paradigm shift in our public discourse, in our civilizational discourse, 2019 was perhaps even more momentous for the number of developments that took place in that tectonic year. I don't know how many people have actually paid attention to this, but there has been a rapid rise in Bharatiya consciousness during and post the pandemic, even better than it was prior to 2019 or 2020. There are multiple reasons for it. One, 2019 saw a slew of developments, each of which touched upon our civilizational or legacy related issues. And 2020, I think from February or March, for close to five to six months at the very least, people were forced to sit within their homes and they had nothing else to do. And it gave them enough time and opportunity to think about all these developments and process it. And this was also the time window when a lot of people were exposed to lectures and public engagements and interactions by people like Ami, Anand and so on and so forth. Post 2020, after the unlock began, when I started the book tour around, I think September 2021, I met a lot of people from across age groups who would come and tell me how that single window had resulted in their own internal transitions, in their own internal uh, movement from apathy, lack of knowledge, lack of concern for the state and society to a state where they became deeply invested in civilization issues. I don't mean to sound insensitive. But I certainly believe that the pandemic and the lockdown was a huge phase of learning for a lot of people, especially on the civilizational front. At least from a Bharatiya perspective, that has been our experience. Now, during that period, while I was uh, delivering lectures on the CA and several other issues, I had one student of Indian origin 
who was pursuing his masters in the United States, who objected to a particular tweet of mine and used Bharat instead of India in one of my tweets. And I was accused of narrow mindedness and whatnot because I'd used Bharat instead of India. And the question that was put to me was, where is the sanction in the Indian constitution for the use of Bharat for India? At which point, I had to extract article 1 of the constitution as a response to that particular tweet. And when I extracted it, I got perhaps the most fantastic response I've ever received in a debate as a sign of free speech. He blocked me. <laughs> I was immediately blocked. So the reality perhaps is, truth does not translate to engagement, it results in blocking. <laughs> that seems to be the current atmosphere. In any case, I think the churn has just about started, the game has just about begun. The transition from India to Bharat has just about started. Before I proceed to engage with you on certain other issues as to what does this translation or this this transition translate 